Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a nice little lower thirds animation all in Premiere Pro. So here it is right here. Let me put this to full screen so we can see it really well. Playing it down, look in the bottom left for this, and you'll see that it comes up. And then it goes back down like so, and this is actually 4K footage, so it's kind of glitching a little bit here. But you can see that it kind of pops up, and then the text comes out, and then it goes large and then pops back down. And so basically how we did this effect was just by combining a bunch of different layers right here. So we're gonna jump into that and we're gonna get started. Before I get started, I just wanted to have a quick note here. YouTube's messing up on the comments. A lot of my comments are like being removed and marked as spam or I don't know why. All I'm doing is thanking and trying to help the people in the comments, but that's happening. So if you guys have any questions, um, if you want help with anything, I actually created an email address, adobemastersofficial at gmail.com. Send the questions through there until I get this comment thing, you know, situated, and we'll talk in there, and then, you know, hopefully in the future that'll resume itself. I'm talking to support right now, so yeah. Just wanted a quick update on that, but let's actually get started with the tutorial right here. So I'm going to delete this right here. Actually, we're going to move it over here and just keep it as sort of a thing we can look back on. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a text layer, just anything that makes it easier. Um, we don't have to actually use this. I'm going to right click it. I'm going to click nest so that we can create ourselves a composition and we can name this something like lower third. And then now we can double click on this. And now it is saved here. So we're just going to delete this graphics and start from scratch. Now we're in a separate composition and it's already linked in here and you can see it's warning us that there's absolutely nothing in there. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click and I'm going to type the exact same thing, Hong Kong. And you notice that it's really large. And the reason I do it like this is now we can work in this space and then we go back to here. We can actually just lower the composition and scale it and put it where we want to. So what we're going to do is we're just going to build it right here and then sort of go off of that. So I'm going to click on this. I like that size. I'm going to drag it to where I kind of like it here. Then I'm going to just go and create a new graphics layer. So let's go new layer. Um, see, there's no like create just a blank layer. So a lot of times I do this. I'll just control C, make sure that this one up here is selected, control V, and then just delete the uh, other part out of there. Let's go to graphics. And I'm just going to delete the Hong Kong out of there, and we're going to work from there. It's still, like I said, it's going to be a little bit comp more complicated than if you did this in After Effects. It's still Premiere trying to replicate After Effects, but you can do it all in here. So what I'm doing now is I'm creating a line. So you can see that the little line is a little bit off. So we're going to go ahead in here. We're going to oops, delete the shape 2 here. Make sure we're selected on shape 1. And we're going to try to drag this and make this as straight as possible. Kind of just have to eyeball it because there is no lock to straight. And they can't really adjust the points from what I know individually. So we're just going to have to do this by eyeballing it. I think that looks pretty straight. So then I'm going to click on it and try to move it into a place that looks good right there looks good. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing. Control C. We're going to add ourselves a new track. One video track. We don't need any more audio tracks. What I did was I clicked in the blank area, right click, and you can just hit add tracks from there. So now we have a third one. So I'm going to hit control C on the bottom one. Going to make sure that the three is selected and we're going to paste up there. And this time I'm actually going to just use the Hong Kong text. Um, I'm going to move this one over here. And then I'm going to type the day. So I'm going to click on this, come in here, type 2016. And now we have a good sort of, yeah, looking good. Those two look aligned. Again, it doesn't have to be perfectly centered because we can just adjust that. This is all alpha channel, which means it's transparent. So we can adjust that in the main composition. Now what we need to do is we actually need to create the animation. So I'm going to first click on the graphic right here. We're going to go into, let's go with uh, scale right here. We're going to make it go small to large. Um, you can use the transform tool for this one. If you want to add some motion blur to it right here, just sort, drag that on there and add some motion blur. I'm not going to do that this time. Let's move just a little bit off the start here. And then we're going to make a keyframe. And then I'm going to move, uh, whoops, we need to start this off at zero. So let's jump back to and then jump to this keyframe, start it at zero. But we need to do one element that I forgot, which is we need to click on the shape and we actually need to adjust its, see this little four, this guy right here, this is anchor point. So everything will be coming off of that. So if we rotate it, it'll now rotate around the center. 
if we scale it, it'll now scale from the center. If it's up on the top, it kind of goes up to the top like that, and that's not the effect I want. I want the anchor point to be dead in the center right here. So now, when you see, now when I scale it down to zero, it comes from the center. Now I'm gonna move it forward 10 or so frames. Gonna have it go just slightly over the, the final size. So maybe like 107, then two more, then come back down to 100. And it just gives it sort of a, a, I don't know, more cartoony, a better feel to it. And you'll see that it's kind of doing this weird thing where it's doing the, the double jump there. And that is because I accidentally created a keyframe at the start here. So we're gonna delete that one off. And now it should start at zero, starts invisible. And then we have this come into it like so. And you see that it just has that little bit of bounce. It just makes it look a little better. The next thing we need to do is we need to animate the Hong Kong in the 2017. So we're gonna go to Hong Kong. We're gonna click on it. We're going to move to the point where it comes in and it sets itself right there. Now it's locked in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the text. We're gonna click on this button. And now you can see we have this reveal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this reveal to the very edge of this white bar. Then we're gonna click and drag the opposite ones over so it reveals the final position of what we want. There we go. Okay, so this is how we wanted it. So we don't wanna you know, lose this spot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click position. We're then going to drag that out over here. And then now we're going to adjust this one over. And so basically we're reverse animating it. Uh, we had the starting point, but the starting point's the ending point, the ending point's the starting point. So what we're doing is we're taking the starting point and making sure it's preserved and then we're moving it out. And then so now I'm going to move it into maybe about that many frames. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten ish. Yeah, that looks about good. So now you can see that we have this come out right over the side like so. And the more you add, the more glitchy it's, this program is going to start getting, um, especially if you add motion blur. But it should run pretty well through the most of this. So now we have that coming out just like so. And we might want to add some effects to this, like maybe inner pull, easy in, back of it easy out just have to right click on them to get there and now you see it just looks a little more fluid there isn't a lot of stuff you can do with only nine keyframes but you can make it look just a little bit more fluid so now that that's set it's time to do the 2016 we're going to do the exact same thing let's move back to the starting point so to do that we're going to go to where this one started we're going to back up to two keyframes right here go to the 2016 and then now you'll see that we're in the exact line so this is where we need to be starting so we're gonna go ahead and create ourselves a mask as well. Drag that onto the white like so. Right there. There, okay. And then we're going to click on the position. We're gonna drag that out so we preserve that final position. And then we're going to drag it really far over. Make sure you go really far, not like right on the line because if it's right on the line, you might be able to see it before the effect starts. It might have a little sort of like glitchy artifacting there. So just make sure you just drag it really far off. Um, now we're going to go back, we're going to click on Hong Kong again, and then we're going to go to the next keyframe, go back to 2016, and now we're lined up on that one, so we're going to lock that into there. And now they'll be on the same time, and you can see it does the exact same thing. And then we can right click on this and do the exact same interpolation, easy in, easy out. And if we want to adjust this, we can drop this down here, and you can kind of see this right here. And you can, oops you can kind of mess around with the, the velocities and stuff like that. Whoops. Um, actually, that might be just one easy in. Actually, let's see. Just an easy in at the end. It's kind of, I like that look. I accidentally did it, but sometimes accidents are really good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to go time full impolation, drop this one down to a linear. Yeah, I think that, I feel, think that feels a lot better. So yeah, the final step of this is the outro. So we're gonna go to the very end and the outro is pretty easy after we've already created the animation. We're going to control C, control V. And now basically it's just gonna do the exact same thing again, except what we wanna do is we're gonna swap these. Not a really easy way to do that, but we can get one of them right. And then just drag, just time the other one up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Drag it in like so. And now it's going to just replicate what it started as just like that, and it's gonna slide back in, and we're gonna do the exact same thing we did to make sure that they're timed up on the other one, go to 2016, and now we can highlight both of these. Control C, Control V, click and drag this one out, drag this one back over, go back to the first one, jump one over, so we're back again in line with our time here, go back down, and drag the other one over, and now we have it going back in, 
And then the final step is the line. So we're going to go back to the graphics. And let's go back to one of these so that we have the starting graphic. Uh, except actually we want it to be starting at the end of the two because that, that would be the inverse of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this. We're going to go 1, 2. Going to drag it up to the 107. 108 ish, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then we're going to drag this back down to 0. And that should be the completion of the effect. So now we have this coming in. And then it going out. And again, like I said, it gets a little glitchy the first time it's trying to render this stuff out because Premiere is not a renderer like After Effects. So it doesn't have a RAM preview. So it's trying to do it all at the exact like real time, which just doesn't usually work out. But now you'll see that we have this giant sort of thing going on right here. And so what we are going to do next is we're going to take this and we're going to just move it to where we want to, which is really, really easy since it's transparent. All we have to do is click on the lower third. Then we're going to scale it down. So we're going to scale down like so, then move its position over. And you can click on this right here so that you can actually drag it yourself. And let's actually put it in the bottom right because I think there's a little bit more space there. And like I said, I probably shouldn't have chosen. Uh, you can see this is 4K footage. Maybe for, if it wasn't 4K, it would probably be working a little bit better because that means that the nested composition is also 4K. I kind of forgot that when I started, but hey, it still worked. So now we have this final composition right here. You see the little Hong Kong come in. And then it goes out just like that. And that is our lower third animation right there. Uh, you know, you can do a bunch of different variations of this, but that's sort of the line lower third variation. That is going to be it on this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, uh, throw them in the comment section below. I might not be able to respond to them. I don't know. Uh, so if you have any like burning questions, go ahead and send me an email at that email address, Adobe Masters Adobe Masters Official at gmail.com. I'll post that. It's going to be the top link in the description below. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, I'm going to keep posting videos no matter if my comments are all screwed up. So I post a video every other day. Hit that subscribe button. And until next time, guys, see ya.